back to Tack and Track. Today, we're gonna to be working on the Miata project, and we're gonna start by doing a radiator swap from the factory unit right here that had a small leak in it to this Mitsumoto. So this car will get turbocharged, so we'll need the additional cooling. So we went ahead and went with an upgrade. All right, so our first step uh, on changing the radiator was pulling out this pan, which is underneath the car that just protects it from debris and stuff getting up underneath the car. It also improves your airflow under there. These bolts were the only ones we couldn't see from the bottom. They got to be reached up through the bumper and are connected up inside where the wheel is, where the wheel well is. Uh, but it's all pretty simple to get to. Our next step was draining the radiator. There's a small plug underneath and you can do that through this nice hole that they cut out for you. If you want to do that before you pull the pan, you can. And it's just a Phillips head drive to pull that plug out. Next was undoing our bolts for the top of the radiator. Um, that was simple too. They're just right there. And they were a 14 millimeter, a simple socket set can do this whole job uh, as long as it's metric. Uh, next, undoing the electrical connections and the hoses. The hoses came off pretty easily. So did the electrical connections. Uh, and then swapping the fans over. So that's got us to where we're gonna stop and take a minute to do the belts. All right, so the fans have been swapped over. Radiator's going in the car now. All right, so now that we have the radiator dropped in place, Gil's going ahead and putting back on the top brace mounts for both sides of the radiator. It did take a little bit of fitting to get it to fit right. But it's just more of kind of get everything lined up and push it into place. Uh, it's just a little bit thicker, so I think it's hitting on an AC line, but it should be fine. Now, one thing we didn't talk about when we pulled this is this connection right here, which is the electrical connection for the fan. You need to be sure you get that out and put that back and attach it correctly. There's one on this side as well for this fan. Okay, so they're on both sides here. And you need to be sure you just get those disconnected and reconnect them when you go back so your fans work. We're going to go ahead and connect both the upper and lower radiator hoses. And with these Mitsumoto's, our drain plug did not come tight. So you need to be sure that you check yours and be sure your drain plug's tight before adding coolant back to the system. All right, so after we got the belly pan on, we went ahead and filled the radiator up with coolant. Now we've started the car, start letting it breathe, start letting coolant go through. At this point in time, it's a really good idea to start checking for leaks, being sure nothing's leaking anywhere from any of those radiator hoses that you disconnected or from the radiator itself. And be sure to check from the bottom side, be sure that that drain plug is tight. So we got the Mishimoto in the car. Um, it fits really well, didn't have to trim anything, had to kind of move a, <clears throat> an AC component a little bit out of the way, but that was all fine. It went in pretty smooth and it does provide a lot better cooling. Um, the one issue that I did have is the stock fans that came on the car, we reused those and they do leave a bit of a gap, uh, which isn't gonna draw air through it quite as well, but it cools so much better anyways, it might not be a problem until we're doing some racing. So we'll have to figure out something out there. However, we won't be able to race the car because we have towed it uh, two days after I got the roll bar in. A uh, young lady was kind enough to pull out in front of me and the car is now gone. Uh, we may buy it back from the insurance and you might see further videos on it, but as a daily driver for the moment, it is gone and it has, uh, I've already gotten all my crying out. But the Mishimoto. It was a front impact and that Mishimoto looks salvageable from what I can tell. I don't think the radiator's in bad shape. It's it's moved, but it hasn't twisted or tweaked. So uh, high marks for the Mishimoto. Yeah, and so I had a uh, E36 M3 that years ago was in a very, very bad accident. We used a plasma torch to cut the engine out, um, out of that wreck. And, while the Mitsumoto was completely wrapped around the engine, it still was fine. It held water. It was still in great shape considering the level of the impact. And that's one of the reasons I've used them in several other cars. 
Uh, my wife's had two X3s, and they're not performance cars. We're not looking to race those or do anything really with those. That was actually the first thing I did to both of her X3s, just as a reliability point rather than as a performance modification. I didn't want it to leave her on the side of the road, and I knew those wouldn't. So, high marks for the radiator. Yeah. So, we'll check back as we kind of figure out what's going to happen to the Miata. That's right. All that's still a little bit up in the air, but thanks for checking out our video today. If you have any guys, if you guys have any questions, please leave them down there in the comments below. We'll be more than happy to answer anything. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.